we have the insane ROG Flow Z13 right here with the insane AMD Ryzen AI Max Plus 395. I had to read it off. And this is the Apple Silicon Moment 4 AMD. We are gonna see how it compares to the M4 Pro because this APU is absolutely mind blowing. Asus did send this out for us to test. That is not a sponsored video. So let's go ahead and compare these. Now, as you guys can see, this thing is basically a tablet. You can detach the keyboard. You have a kickstand on the back. And so if you wanna see a comparison to the M4 iPad Pro, let us know. But we had to bust out the M4 Pro because of how powerful it is. Now, Asus does call it a gaming laptop. You have a lot of power feeding into it. But even though this has dual fans, has vapor chamber cooling, it does not need a dedicated graphics card. Now, the screen is a 2.5K display, 180 hertz, DCI P3 color accuracy. And with this, you can actually get up to 128 gigabytes of RAM in an APU. So this is a crazy competitor to Apple. Now, the M4 Pro, you can get up to 64 gigabytes, only half of this. You could see that the Z13 is a little bit more expensive than this M4 Pro, but it also comes with a terabyte of storage and it has more RAM as well. So if you'd upgrade this to get more storage, the price is about the same. And I have to say that this thing is built incredibly well. It's a full CNC aluminum body. You have this really cool window where you could see uh, the main board inside of there. And the crazy thing is, even though it's a tablet, you have a ton of ports. We have a micro SD card slot. We have USB 4, full HDMI 2.1. We have a regular USB port on the side here. I mean, this thing is very impressive. Now this video, we're gonna focus on performance and looking at the M4 Pro, it's powerful. It has a 12 core CPU, high clock speeds, but the AMD chip has 16 cores and 5.1 gigahertz top clock speed. That is crazy. Let's go ahead and run Geekbench for CPU. And one thing that I'm curious about is, will we still get great performance on battery power? We're gonna run that as well. All right, we have our scores and look at that, the M4 Pro is pounding above its weight as far as cores and clock speed. We have 26% faster in single core score. And then in terms of multi-core score, it's a lot closer and we have an 11% difference. Now remember guys, this M4 Pro just recently came out when it was the biggest jump that we have seen with the whole chip lineup in a crazy long time. Second generation three nanometers compared to four nanometers. So having these scores with four nanometer design in an all-in-one chip is very impressive. Now I wanna test something else. I know that a lot of you guys say this is a gaming laptop, like it's called, you're supposed to have it plugged in, but I still wanna test it unplugged. So running the benchmark, and before that I checked all the settings, and here in Armory Crate, you guys could see that if you're on battery power, you can't go into the full max performance and fan mode, that's only if you're plugged in. So with this chip, if you did have it in a full-size gaming laptop, you'd have more thermal headroom, and you could probably get more performance out of it than in this tablet form factor. And look at that. I mean, that is a pretty big drop off in performance on the multi-core score. We went from a difference of 11% to now 54% difference. And I really wish they would let us have the full performance mode on battery. I know it's to save battery power, but right now it is not available. You know, maybe it could get changed in the future or some way to enable it. Uh, but for now, if you're trying to do high performance tasks, you definitely want to plug this thing in. And now let's compare the graphics performance. We have 16 cores here compared to 40 compute cores. Of course, this is an x86 processor still, and I'm gonna run Metal versus OpenCL. The founder of Geekbench said it is comparable, so let's see. And here are the scores. We have a crazy 100,000 score on the MacBook compared to 83. 1,400, about 19% difference for this compute test. And now we're gonna run 3D Mark's new Steel Nomad Lite in unlimited mode to test out gaming performance because, like I said, this is an x86 laptop. So you do have full support for all sorts of games without any limitations. And look at that, guys. We have an impressive 63.34 
FPS compared to 49.8, that's a difference of over 27%. And it makes me wonder, is this score even higher than the unbinned version? And then of course you have maximum compatibility with games without any translation layers. And now let's really push these CPUs. I have Cinebench opened up right here. We're gonna do the stress test and we're gonna look at the temperatures as well. So let me open up MSI Center here and we have MX Power Gadget. And it looks like we're running at about 3.1, 3.2. We saw 4.7 gigs but with all those cores being maxed out, it does run at a lower clock speed, just like the M4 Pro. This is running at 3.9. So even though the peak clock speeds are higher on the AMD chip, the sustained is actually lower. And one really interesting thing is that we're running at only 81 degrees Celsius. And I actually hear the Mac louder in terms of fans than this thing. This actually peaked at 108 degrees Celsius. It's running at about 95 right now. Um, that's the average, actually the highest one, 102. So that is pretty crazy. It sounds like this thing is not using that much power. It's not pushing the wattage that high on this chip. So I think a theory on having in a larger device definitely stands that this chip has a lot more performance in it. And now we have our thermal camera. Let's take a look at the temps after eight minutes. You guys see the exhaust vents right there, 46 I saw, and then where the chip is 42.7, 43 right there. Let's take a look at the Asus exhaust about 42 and just slightly lower temperatures on this thing, at least with the air and what's inside. But then taking a look at our screen right here, 82 degrees Celsius still inside that chip. And that's showing us that it's doing a great job getting all the heat out of the chip and out with the airflow. And my goodness, guys, the test just finished. And the Asus with AMD actually beat out the M4 Pro even though it ran between 80 to 82 degrees Celsius the whole time, it was quieter, there's more power that could be pushed, but that is insane. 1381 compared to 1318. Wow, so if you're really pushing the CPU hard instead of just quick little tasks, it is a powerhouse. But what about simple tasks you do every day, like web browsing? Let's run speedometer 3.0. And looking at these scores, I mean, that is a big difference. And that is because of the single core performance where the M4, it is just untouchable. That series of chips is so fast. But with that said, let's go ahead and open up Figma for some web design. And this is a project brought to us by 500 Designs, one of the best design studios in California. You guys can see we have a lot of files here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a smoothness test. So let's go ahead and zoom in right over here. Of course, the M4, nice and smooth. You guys saw how quick that loaded up. Let's match up the same spot, very quick to zoom. And that might've been even more quick. I didn't even see the low res version. So, I mean, moving around, definitely very, very nice, very fast loading. And now we have these 12 high resolution layers selected and we are gonna go ahead and export these and time them. And wow, guys, I was not expecting this. The MacBook took a minute, 14 seconds and the Asus with AMD took a minute and 15 seconds. I was expecting a minute 35, minute 45 for an x86 laptop, which has slower single core performance. This is incredible. I think it's beating out a lot of the brand new chips from its competitors, both x86 and ARM chips. That is very, very impressive. And for this next test, it's gonna get really interesting because I have Blender open right here and we're going through the settings for graphics rendering. And obviously you can't use CUDA, no NVIDIA, can't use OptiX for the ray tracing cores, no NVIDIA. This also isn't working. So we have HIP, there's also this experimental uh, feature you can run, but with this AP, you can also change the amount of RAM that goes to video. 
uh, and how much goes to the system. So right now we have it set to eight gigs, but we're gonna run two tests, one eight and another, we're gonna kick it up to see how much of a difference we get. So let's go ahead and test this. So we have our results here, and honestly, I am very impressed because I was not expecting this. I know the MacBook, is very fast with the M4 Pro chip. It's had a lot of optimizations. This took 43 seconds, 0.6, on our second run. With this thing, I tried out all the different options. So having just a GPU with experimental ray tracing features got us 55 seconds, very close to the Mac. I was expecting minute and a half, two minutes, because unlike Nvidia, which has a lot of optimizations, this is their brand new chip and it can't use that technology. So it should be getting better in the future. But now I'm gonna go ahead and change our RAM settings. If you guys look in here, we have the variable graphics memory, or you could set it to custom. And we're gonna go ahead and swap this to 16. You can go all the way to 24, but we want enough for the system. Let's hit apply. We have to do a restart here. And I wanna remind you guys that you can get up to 128 gigs in this system. So you can have 64 gig for graphics, 64 gig for your system, um, or maybe even more so than 64 for the graphics and that is gonna give a lot of capabilities for high resolution files. All right guys, we ran this again and it looks like the score stayed the same. Uh, that just means that this particular render doesn't need more than eight gigabytes of memory, but if you're working on more complex things, uh, or LLMs or other uh, tasks where you need more VRAM, it's awesome to be able to have that flexibility. And now with those real world performance tests doing surprisingly well on the AMD, where some of the benchmarks were lower, I have Lightroom Classic opened up right here. I have 500 high resolution raw images that are edited. And this is going to use both the CPU and the graphics and the memory. It is just a really tough test. We're pushing everything. Let's go ahead and export these. I'm gonna start my timer here. And because we have 500, it also tests out throttling as well. Now running this test, I'm taking a look at what is happening here. And on the Mac, we're using 80% CPU, 100% GPU. So it's very GPU heavy optimized. Here, we're using almost maxed out, pretty much maxed out CPU. The graphics isn't used very much, so I'm not sure if there needs to be more optimization um, instead of using the NVIDIA ones. And our RAM, we have it set 1616, so our RAM's maxed out here too, so it might be better to actually swap it to have more RAM for the CPU task. But with that said, at the start, the Mac was flying but now this thing is starting to catch up. And now guys, we're almost done here and I'm surprised, even though this was so behind, they're about to finish very closely. Oh my goodness. No way, it finished. Oh my goodness. The Aces took six minutes and 13 seconds compared to six minutes and 16 seconds on the M4 Pro MacBook. Honestly, once again, I was not expecting this. I thought we've had years of optimization with Lightroom working so well with metal and these chips. This one right here, we still had it in the 16 gig mode only for the CPU and more CPUs being used. GPU wasn't being used that much, surprisingly. It started out slower, but then it caught up. That was incredible. For a performance this good, I mean, it's being marketed as a gaming machine, but for real world work, it is incredibly fast. All right guys, and now I'm running the test again, but we switched over to have 24 gigs available for the CPU. Right away, you guys could see, we're using 17.5 gigs right now. Um, so more than the previous cap that we had. So it is helpful and it's running, getting close to being done. So we'll see what the final time is gonna be, but it is very useful to have that flexibility instead of normal APUs where you just have a small amount with weak graphics. And look at this guys, five minutes, 19 seconds. We just shaved off about a minute just by allocating a little bit more RAM to the CPU. So with this machine, we had 6, 16, 519 right now with this. This actually beats out the unbinned M4 Pro that you would get in a 16 inch machine or if you pay the extra money on this. Uh, that got 524 and we still were using barely any graphics. I feel like there's a lot more optimization that can happen for this GPU. Wow guys, 
This is crazy. Usually with a lot of Windows machines, with previous Intel machines, what we would see is the benchmarks could be high, your basic benchmarks, but then in the real world, the Mac would smash and destroy um, the higher performance machines. But this AMD APU, even though it's still x86 4 nanometer, is performing really well with very low temps. And I'm sure this same chip and other machines that have you know a little bit more thickness can perform even better. God, just call me impressed. I know Vadim's very impressed over there on the camera. Insanity. This is awesome. You guys let me know your thoughts down below. But for us, when we're seeing a chip like this, an APU that is finally has very good performance, has a lot of RAM capability, flexibility. This just shows that, you know, give it a couple more years, this is gonna get better. And Apple finally has some really good competition with chips that don't need dedicated graphics, chips that are running cool, a lot cooler in this instance, that are on thin and light machines. Before it's like, do you want a thin and light? That's not as performance, especially in terms of graphics, or do you want a thicker, heavier laptop with a dedicated GPU that sucks a lot of power? Now you have it in one. You can play a bunch of games with good graphic settings, uh, and you have a thin and light tablet. That is crazy. Now, you guys let us know if you wanna see that iPad comparison, if you're interested in that, because this is a laptop, it's a tablet, compared to just the laptop here. I'm very, very impressed. So good job, AMD. You guys are killing it. Asus, good job on this machine. Beautiful design, great tablet all in one that's capable, not just for gaming, for really good high-end productivity. This thing is really cool. So once again, let us know your thoughts down below. Click that circle above to subscribe. Check out one of those great videos right over there. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next one.